Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, finding the area of your circle. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even your own homework, you can always visit my Facebook page at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. This video is only going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started. Unlike our straight edge shapes, we're not going to be using side, length, width, height, base to find our area for our circle. Instead, we're going to have R, D, and pi. R, D, and pi. Now, pi is a very special number. It's a constant number, um, but it's a very special number. I'm not going to go into it too, too much, but I will let you know that pi is simply the ratio between a circle circumference and its diameter. It's the ratio between a circle's circumference and its diameter. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but once again, we're not gonna get into everything you're ever gonna need to know about pi. It's a very special number. But what is a diameter? If it's the ratio between the circumference and the diameter, what's the diameter? Well, your diameter is going to be pretty much the distance, let's say we have a circle here, is gonna be pretty much the distance between two points on your circle that goes directly through the center of your circle. So you can think of it as a line segment that connects two points on your circle, but it has to go through the middle of your circle. That's your diameter. So what's your radius? Well, your radius is gonna be exactly half of your diameter. So that right there is your radius. That right there is your radius. So you can think of your radius as the line segment that goes from the center to any point on your circle. It's always gonna be half of the diameter. And one cool thing about your diameters and your radius is, it doesn't matter how you draw your diameter or your radius. It's never going to change its value. So these two points over here will have the same diameter as those two points, as these two points. As long as you're going through the center of your circle and you have your line segment with these two points, it's always going to be the same diameter for your circle. Thus, you're always going to have the same radius for your circle. The values never change for your particular circle. So that's your radius and your diameter, but let's jump back into this special number pi. What is pi? We said it's a constant, and although it's special, it should have a value. Well, it does have a value, and it's a very long value. It has a lot of decimal places. So for this video, we're going to round it and say that it's roughly or approximately 3.14. So 3.14 is what we're gonna say pi is for this video. It's much more than this. It doesn't end here, but we're just going to cut it off at two decimal places to make our math a little bit easier as we get into using the formula in our next section. So now we've talked about radius, diameter, and we even have a value for our pi. Let's jump into using or actually talking about the actual formula. So now that we talked about your pi's, your radiuses, and your diameters, let's construct or make our formula. So the area formula for a circle is quite simple. It's pi times r, your radius, squared. So it's pi times your radius squared. Now this is not to be confused with the formula for your circumference. So let's clean this up a little bit. The 
formula for your circumference, I'm gonna call it C, looks pretty similar. It's two times pi times r for your radius. Now, what is pi times r squared? What is r squared? Well, r squared is r times r. So when you write it out like this, pi times r times r, it looks kind of similar, especially if you rewrite this as pi times two times r. Looks very, very similar. It's very easy to mix these up. Don't do it. These are not the same formula. I don't want you thinking that the area formula is the same as your circumference formula. Don't mix them up. R times R is not the same as two times R. You're multiplying R by itself. This time you're multiplying R by two. Not the same formula. R squared, not the same as two times R. That mixes up a few people, so I just wanted to kind of mention it in today's video. But we're gonna go back to our area formula. So we're working with pi times r squared. So if we know our radius, for example, if we know our radius, and we said radius is going to be the line segment that goes from the middle to a point on our circle, right? So we can fill in that point if we need to. Our radius, let's say it's eight yards. Eight yards, and I'll clean that up a little bit. Let's say it's eight yards. We can plug in our numbers and see what we get. Now, eight yards, eight is going to be, eight yards is going to be the radius. We don't know a diameter, but we don't need the diameter because we have the radius. So we can substitute that into our formula. So it's pi times eight yards times eight yards. And what's eight yards times eight yards? That's going to be pi times 64 yards, what? Yards squared. Because remember, we're finding area. And that's gonna be very similar to what we did before. We're always going to have square units after we're finding area. So we have to square the units that we start with. If we start with yards, we're going to have to square our yards. Now this is the exact answer. However, we said our pi, I'll move it over a little bit, our pi is going to be roughly 3.14. We're gonna cut it off at two decimal places. So we can actually get an approximate value of 200.96 yards squared. So this is going to be the exact value, but if you want to get a rounded value, we can go to this, 200.96 yards squared. And that's how you use your formula. So let's say we have a different, a different radius. So we had eight yards for that one. Let's say our radius looks a little bit different. What would we do? Well, let's say we have a circle and the radius is gonna be over here this time. And the radius is, let's say 10 feet. So we have our R is going to be 10 feet. We still don't know what our diameter is for this, but that's not necessary because we have what we need. We can plug everything in again. So there's gonna be pi times 10 feet times 10 feet. Now what's 10 feet times 10 feet? Well, that's going to be pi times 100 feet squared. Remember, square units. Now, once again, that's the exact value, but if you plug it into your calculator, you can get a rounded value of 314 feet squared. This will be the area or the rounded approximate area of this circle. Let's jump into one more circle and really put our, our formula to the test here. So 
we've been working pretty well with this radius. But let's say we aren't given the radius. Instead of the radius, let's say we have this circle. So we have a circle and we have the diameter going through the center. So we know it's the diameter. And the diameter is 18 inches. So the whole diameter is 18 inches. 18 inches. What do we do in order to find the area for this circle? This area formula doesn't have diameter. Well, what is diameter and how does it relate to the radius? Remember, your diameter is going to be double your radius or your radius is half your diameter. So if we know the diameter is going to be 18 inches, our radius should be half of that, 9 inches. Half of 18 is 9. So now we know our radius, we can plug that in. And we do the same thing we've been doing. Pi times, not the diameter, we're plugging radius. 9 inches times 9 inches. That's going to be pi times 81 inches squared. Don't forget your square units. This is the actual exact value, but let's say we want to round it, so an approximate value. If you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 254.34 inches squared. This is the approximate value for the area of this circle. And notice we didn't have our radius to begin with. We had diameter, but we still found our area because we know that the radius is just half of the diameter. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video and I hope you now know how to find the area for your circle. However, if you have any questions about what we said today or even on homework, remember to visit me on my Facebook page at Timmy Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.